Hello and welcome to Why Media Political Sensex. I'm your host, Ramona Singh, and there's a lot going on here in Canada, and I want to talk about this affordability crisis. Uh, we did a Why Media exclusive report on the affordability crisis that Canadians are uh, facing right now during uh, this year at inflation rate at the highest it has been in 31 years, and uh, Bank of Canada says that even though they're increasing the interest rates, that inflation will increase until uh, further on to this year and potentially next year until it can come down to its 2% target, even though right now it's at 5.8%. Uh, and that's made everything very unaffordable when it comes to cost of food, uh, gas prices, cost of living. Uh, we've covered the latest poll that was released uh, in terms of uh, for renters in Toronto, where they are saying that uh, they have to choose between food or paying their rent as the rent prices have also increased. And so, so it's not just the housing crisis for homeowners, but also renters as well. And this is uh, something that we've also heard during the election that's taking place in Ontario, where the PCs formed a majority government on their plan when it comes to affordability and the vision uh, for the future of Ontario. When it comes to our parliament in Ottawa and House of Commons, well, the leaders of the parties are also asking the federal government to do more when it comes to affordability. Candace Spurgeon, who is the interim leader of the Conservative Party, she has uh, put out a press conference talking about affordability issues and saying what the Conservatives essentially want to do and uh, asking the uh, Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, to be able to work with them, as well as the NDP leader, Jagmeet Singh, He's also uh, put out statements in a press conference when it comes to affordability and asking the government to do more, even after the supply and confidence agreement that the NDP leader Jagmeet Singh has with the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to support his government and the budgets uh, until 2025. That will see Justin Trudeau uh, be Prime Minister for 10 years, uh, a big record to hold in Canadian political history. Uh, but this is something that uh, Jagmeet Singh is now saying the feds should listen to him. And so we're going to go first to Candace Bergen, her message on uh, when it comes to affordability and uh, what the federal government can do more of as the Conservatives are proposing ideas to them. Good morning. Prime Minister Trudeau's political vindictiveness and pettiness is hurting Canadians. This is his last chance before the summer adjournment to stop playing politics with Canadians' lives, to listen to what we have been saying, and to take action for Canadians who are suffering with the high cost of fuel, food, and housing. Since February, we Conservatives have been presenting pragmatic and reasonable solutions to help Canadians who are suffering because of the affordability crisis. Instead, Trudeau is being vindictive and unreasonable. He thinks he's hurting Conservatives politically by saying no to our proposals. In fact, he is punishing Canadians with his petty political vengeance. The solutions that we've been offering for months aren't radical ideas. They are common sense solutions. When gas prices went through the roof this winter, we asked that the government suspend the GST on fuel to give Canadians a break. Other countries were providing tax reliefs, some provinces were doing it too, and we believed that our federal government could do it. The Prime Minister said no. We then asked again for relief for Canadians by suspending the carbon tax on April 1st. Another reasonable idea during a difficult time that would give Canadians just a little bit of a break. Again, Trudeau said no. Both times it was clear he was saying no to us because of politics, because it was us who were asking for it, because it was our idea. But the fact is, in both cases, when Trudeau said no to Conservatives, his vindictiveness did not hurt us, but it did hurt Canadians. Keep in mind, the cost of living crisis does not directly affect him. The Prime Minister doesn't pay for his own gas. He doesn't pay for his own food. He does not have to stand in line. Conservatives have been asking as well that the tariff on fertilizer brought before March 2nd be removed in order to help our agricultural producers. The Prime Minister again said no. Again, his political vindictiveness in saying no to us doesn't hurt Conservatives, but it directly hurts our farmers, our producers. 
Another consistent request that we've been making is that the Prime Minister listen to the science and to experts who say that vaccine mandates and restrictions are no longer required. And we have asked that he return us to pre-COVID normal in order to allow Canadians to travel unobstructed, to help our hurting tourism sector, and to let Canadians get back to their pre-COVID no normals. Justin Trudeau keeps saying no to that. He thinks he's hurting Conservatives, but what he is doing is causing irreparable harm to Canadians. This is probably the most egregious example of his pettiness, his vindictiveness, and his hypocrisy. He travels around the world to countries without restrictions, enjoying their freedoms, hanging out, eating, and drinking with potentially unvaccinated people who are all unmasked. We've all seen the photos of Justin Trudeau, maskless, in every single country that he has been to in the last year while at the same time telling his own citizens, telling Canadians they must abide by domestic COVID rules, draconian and completely out of date. The Prime Minister's forced restrictions at home and the personal freedoms that he flaunts while he's outside of Canada are nothing short of disingenuous theatrics combined with astounding hypocrisy. In all of these cases, what is so incredibly disturbing is the Prime Minister's willingness to play politics with people's lives. Conservatives, on the other hand, have chosen to offer positive solutions to the challenges that our country is facing. You can go back and check our record throughout this session. We are putting Canadians first by consistently proposing reasonable and pragmatic solutions. Today, we are offering our own, own omnibus motion of sorts that will give Canadians a break and get their lives back to normal. We do not think that that is too much to ask for. We are calling on the NDP and the Bloc to help us help Canadians. They have a chance today to put Canadians first. Our message to the Bloc and the NDP today is don't vote for us. Don't vote for our motion. Vote for Canadians. The same opportunity exists for this Liberal government. The Prime Minister can continue to be petty and stubborn, or he can do the right thing and agree with these common sense ideas for the sake of Canadians. Today we are offering him a chance to put his vindictive pettiness aside and deliver the relief that Canadians need and that they want so badly before the summer holidays. I sincerely hope that he takes it. Thank you. My colleague now, Luke Bertold, will deliver. That's uh, Candace Burden, the uh, interim uh, leader of the Conservative Party, talking about affordability and what the Conservatives had put forward to the Prime Minister and his uh, his caucus for when it comes to affordability, which was to uh, there was the August uh, sorry April first increase on the carbon tax. Essentially, they had asked. Uh, for that to be uh, not put on, to be not increased, and by lifting the GST on fuel. Uh, if you want to know what you're actually paying when it comes to gas prices, even though now it's gone over the $2 a litre mark uh, throughout uh, parts of Canada, well, here's the gas tax broken down. Essentially, uh, on the, ga the, the gas tax is $0.10 cents per litre for federal excise tax. 11 cents per liter for federal carbon tax that's been put in place uh, the increase since April 1st of this year uh, 14.7 cents per liter on the Ontario fuel tax uh, and this is for the province of Ontario that I'm giving you the gas tax breakdown and 13 percent is HST essentially HST means the both the GST and the local provincial sales tax that are levied on the liter of gas so that's the breakdown of uh, the pricing on gas and uh, what's even uh, you need to be more aware of is that uh, after the other taxes such as the federal excise tax, the federal carbon tax, the Ontario fuel tax that's on the liter, uh, the cost per liter, well on top of that on top of those taxes that's when the GST is added on so essentially it's a tax on tax uh, and that's what you're seeing at the pumps. Uh, which is what uh, the uh, conservative leader is talking about when it comes to uh, making things more affordable. And one way is to ensure that uh, uh, taxes are uh, cut for, for Canadians to be able to afford basic things such as food and, uh, you know, 
get their gas, to be able to pay their mortgage, to be able to pay their rent. And this is what the conservative leader is talking about now. Jagmeet Singh, the NDP leader uh, who uh, supports Justin Trudeau on, on many of uh, uh, the legislations and when it comes to the budget. Now he's saying the federal government should be taking a look at his ideas, which is a little bit different than the conservatives, on when it comes to affordability and how they should address it. Take a look on Jigmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, his message. Bonjour. Thank you for being here. Good day. We saw the recent report that one out of four Canadians are going hungry because they cannot afford to buy the food that their families need. One out of four Canadians. That is a shocking number. That is clearly a serious problem when a country as wealthy as ours has one out of four Canadians that cannot buy enough food to keep their families fed and are going hungry. We know that the cost of living going up has had dire and serious impacts on people. We also know that the cost of gas going up has meant that family budgets are being squeezed. People are hurting. This is serious. Working families, children, parents are struggling as a result of the cost of living going up. But we also know when the cost of living goes up, it impacts workers, it impacts families, but it also benefits those at the very top. We see that those at the top make more profit. In fact, we know right now that corporate profits, according to economists, are one of the major drivers of inflation. The fact that corporations are making record profits in this difficult time has contributed to at least a fourth of the inflation that we're experiencing right now. And I, I want just to highlight some of the facts right now in terms of the corporate profits that we're seeing. The 2021 corporate pre-tax profits in Canada hit an all-time high of $445 billion above the previous record set in 2018. So that's a record number in terms of profit set. We have some of the highest quarterly profit recorded by the oil and gas companies in 2021. There are significant clear evidence that point to the fact that the large corporate profits, they're driving up costs because they want to make more profit, their profits are contributing to inflation in a significant way. And in this context, what are the other parties doing? Well, liberals are saying, just wait. We've got indexed child benefit. We've got indexed GST tax credit. Just wait. People get help in a year. People can't afford to wait. Tell that to a family that right now is hungry because they cannot afford groceries. They can't afford to wait. Can't do it. And the conservatives and the liberals both want to allow corporations to continue to make these record profits, continue to allow billionaires and millionaires to receive more and more money than ever before, rather than do something about it. And that's why we put forward our plan. Our plan is to say families right now need help. They can't wait a year, as liberals are saying. Liberals aren't taking this seriously. They aren't thinking that people are, are hurting as much as they are. They are hurting. The conservatives and the liberals both want to allow these companies to continue to see these record profits and do nothing about it, even though their record profits are driving up one-fourth of the inflation that we're experiencing right now. We're saying this. We want to tax the excess profits of these profitable companies, these corporations that are making record-setting profits. We want to tax their excess profits that they're making now and redistribute that to families that need it most, uh, working families, regular families. We want to give them money directly between $500 to $1,000 per family. That's going to go directly to families in need. That's going to go directly to workers. That's going to go directly to ordinary families. They need help now, and that's our plan. We see the record profits that corporations are setting and say that they need to pay their fair share. They need to reinvest that. We need to reinvest that into people that need it. And so that's our, that's our proposal. That's what we're putting forward today. Working families need help. They can't wait. And it is the responsibility of government when we see these excess profits being made that governments step in and say, if you're making excess profits off the backs of people in a difficult time when people can't afford to eat, then you have to start paying your fair share. And we're going to redistribute that back to people, meaning families are going to receive between $500 to $1,000 directly in their pockets with our plan. That's Jigmeet Singh, the NDP leader, and on his 
ideas and plan for the federal government to do more when it comes to affordability. Essentially, he's talking about taking stronger action against uh, corporations that have profited uh, during the pandemic, what he calls a crisis, and the excess profits that they're making, essentially to be able to put that money into the hands of families that need it. He's talking about somewhere between $500 to $1,000 per family, uh, and that would go directly to them. When it comes to the cost of uh, just basic things such as food, well, based on the Consumer Index report that was released by Statistics Canada for the month of April, until their new numbers are out for the month of May, uh, these are the latest stats that we have. Uh, it showed that Canadians are paying 9.7% uh, more for food uh, from purchasing from the store compared to last year. And uh, that is the highest it's been since September of 1981. So that's about 41 year difference. Uh, in terms of how high the cost of food is. And just to break it down, when it comes to the average things that you're seeing at the grocery store, this is an increase compared to last year. The same time for basic things such as fresh fruits, you're looking at a 10% increase. When it comes to fresh vegetables, that's an 8.2% increase. When it comes to meat, 10.1% increase compared to last year. The pricing for starchy items, it's bread is 12.2% more this year compared to last. Pasta is 19.6% more. Uh, rice is 7.4% more in terms of cost. Cereal products, 13.9% more. And if you can imagine the average item of a cup of coffee to be able to purchase that if you can imagine, the increase is 13.7% more uh, in terms of pricing this year compared to last year, and that's for a cup of coffee. And uh, this is uh, what the opposition leaders have put out their statements, are asking the feds to do. And in response, the federal government, well, the ministers in the uh, liberal government, essentially the innovation minister, Francois Philippe Champagne, said inflation is happening everywhere. It's not just something that is uh, for Canadians and not in the control of uh, what the government has done for Canada, but essentially what's happening internationally, and it's also been driven largely by what's happening in Ukraine uh, and Russia, the war that continues for over three months now, and saying that the cost of fuel and food has directly to do with that, and when it especially comes to uh, wheat products, as Russia and Ukraine are the biggest exporters of wheat, and that is what the innovation minister has said in response to uh, inflation and the rising rates and the rising cost of living. And Trudeau said that uh, in this, his address about affordability, essentially he said that the GST rebates and can the child benefit are already indexed in the rise each year by annual rate of inflation, essentially saying that the government has taken a look at that and uh, they're ensuring that um, when the GSE rebates go out or when can a child benefit goes out that it's able to match uh, what that rate of inflation is in terms of increase annually. And when it comes to environment minister, while well, he has said that 70% of the increased prices at the pumps that Canadians are experiencing have to do with what's happening internationally and not so much with uh, what the carbon tax is. He says that a quarter of the increase is from taxes, but at a provincial level. And uh, when it comes to the price on pollution, he says that the federal tax only contributes about to 5%. Uh, of that increased fuel price and the remainder of it is on provincial. So essentially saying, you know, we're doing what we can and this is where things are at. Uh, he also has talked about um, uh, giving money back when it comes to the carbon tax and that goes, he says directly through rebates, goes back into the pocket of Canadians and that's where uh, the carbon tax um, pricing that's on fuel. That is uh, part of what uh, the ministers of the federal government have in response to, uh, to, to the high cost of living and when it comes to the opposition leaders. And according to uh, the federal government, they're saying about 12 million people receive GST rebates and, uh, and 6.4 million people are, are eligible for Canada Children uh, Quality of Child Benefit. And this is where he says that that's targeted with indexed with the rate of inflation every year. Uh, and, and that's what's going on. And when it comes to uh, Mark Holland, well, he is the uh, government house leader. 
he says, well, he, you know, not to listen to the conservatives, as he says, they, they, they do not work with the government, and this is his statement I have for you. He says, conservatives are the ones being obstructionist, charging that the f official opposition, uh, they essentially, he's saying, they block the work that the Commons is doing, and they're still acting like they're a majority government. He says that unlike working uh, with uh, the NDP or the Bloc Quebecois, who actually go into a position of give and take, he says the conservatives don't offer anything, and his statement I'm going to read is, I'm here in a minority government, I'm willing to work with anybody, uh, and uh, he says that this is not something that is he's able to do with the conservatives, although we just heard the conservative leader charge against the federal government saying that uh, they don't want to work with the conservatives because they want to punish them politically, but essentially it's hurting Canadians instead. Well, as the debate continues in the House of Commons, at the end of the day, it's the average person who has to deal with the... Uh, a rising cost of living and, uh, and and what can be done about it as we're hearing that gas prices will continue to go up, inflation uh, rates will inc uh, continue to go up as interest rates are increased by the Bank of Canada and and, and, and some of those loans, the, the paybacks will go up and so it, what, what that means and uh, what the solution is, well we are not hearing them yet from the leaders of this country about, uh, but we're going to keep tracking it. Uh, this is Why Media Political Sensex. I'm going to bring you all the news that is relevant to this, and uh, we're going to keep track of this, and we're going to hope for the best. I'm Ramona Singh, and we'll be right back.